particular section that is there on the cone. Now, if I view it from the top, it will uh, it will be something like this. That is an ellipse, which is showed by this uh, shaded part, which is there. And again, for ellipse, E is great, smaller than one. So we can say that for ellipse, if a play for drawing an ellipse or getting an ellipse, if I pass a plane slightly uh, with a slight angle, and if I cut it, if I cut a cone, then it will result in an ellipse, which seems like this. Next is parabola. We know that for parabola, this uh, plane has to be parallel to edges. Now, what edge it has to be parallel to? This is the cutting plane, which is depicted by this red line in this 3D figure. This is the uh, slant, uh, sl slant side of the cone. Now, this plane has to be parallel to this slide, this side of the cone that is the slant side. If this is parallel, then my eccentricity will be equal to 1. And if I remove this section, that is o a uh, o a dash a and b if i remove this uh, i this something of this sort will remain and if i view it from this side then this is what i'll view which is a parabola that is b2 a2 and b2 dash and a dash for eccentricity is equal to one parabola and we can say that for getting a parabola pass a plane parallel to the edge of the cone that is edge of the cone that is slant edge of the cone for an hyperbola the angle has to be very steep. First for the circle it was parallel, then for uh, say parabola it got a little bit steeper. Uh, sorry, not for the parabola, for ellipse it for it was like this, I got a circle. Then if I made it a, uh, the plane slight uh, angle, then I got an ellipse. If I made it parallel to the cone, say this is the cone, this is the axis of the cone. If I am passing the plane exactly parallel to it, then I am getting a parabola. And then again, if this is the axis of the cone and I am making a very steep angle with it, then I'll it will result in the, what is shown in the figure. You can see this is at a very steep angle. This angle is almost tending to 90 degrees, but not 90 degrees. It is almost tending to 90 degrees and this and again I have removed this uh, section which is beyond this line and I will get something of this sort which is also depicted in this red thing that is there. Here eccentricity is always greater than 1 that should be kept in mind. Now uh, let us discuss the first part that is the construction of ellipse. Let us see there are different methods for construction of ellipse. ellipse arc of circle method, concentric circle method, oblong method, direct pricks, focus method. So we are discussing four methods today for construction of an ellipse. For step by step, we will be doing this. Okay, let us start with the first method that is arc of the circle. For before starting with arc of the circle method, let us know a few things about ellipse first. Now for an ellipse that is A, C, B and D, we have a uh, few things to know that is A, B, this is the major axis, C, D is the minor axis, this is the center of the ellipse that is the intersection point of the major and minor axis that is point O. This F and uh, F1 and F2 are the focus of an ellipse, an ellipse has two focus. If you see that if there is a mirror which is uh, of this shape that is this is a concave mirror. Now, if I have a concave mirror, if I have two concave mirrors, so I have two fo focuses and if I join both of them, I will get an ellipse of this sort. So again, for focus, what happens is if parallel rays of light are incident from this end, uh, just like my cursor is moving parallel lines uh, uh, incident here, then they will certainly pass through the focus. So this point is known as the focus and F1 and F2, both are the foci of the uh, ellipse that is A, C, B and D. Moving ahead, we have this certain definition of uh, ellipse that this is the second definition of ellipse. The first few methods are based on the second definition of ellipse. Then we have uh, directrix method which is uh, based on the first definition of ellipse. So let us see, let us observe the figure carefully and line by line let us interpret what uh, the definition says. So we have these different points on the ellipse that we have taken and we have drawn uh, lines from one focus and joined those point and then taken that point and joined to the other focus. Now what this definition says is that if I measure the distance of F1 to P1, add it with distance of P1 to F2, that is the total distance of F1 P to P1 F, that is F1 P1 plus F, uh, P1 F2, will, that will be always equal to F1 P2 plus P2 F2, that will always be equal to the length of the 
major axis that is AB. If I take any point on the circle, say I'll take this point as N, and if I, uh, I'm sorry, I just went away. Yeah, so this is F1 to PN, then PN to F2, the total length, okay? That if I add it up, I'll get it equal to AB. And this will always be equal to P1, uh, F1, P1 and P1, F2. So any point on the circle, uh, any point on the ellipse, if I take, if I measure its distance from uh, both the focuses and add those distances, it will be always equal to uh, AB, that is the major axis and it will always be equal to constant because AB is not changing. Now, uh, if I have the major, ax uh, major axis, another thing is there that these are the minor axis endpoints. So if I do the same thing with the endpoints of the minor axis also, then I also I will get the length of the major axis. That is F1C plus CF2 is always equal to F1D, DF2 and which is always equal to the length of the major axis that is AB. So we can see that F1C and CF2 are equal. So we can say that F1C is equal to CF2 is equal to F2D is equal to DF1 is equal to half of AB that is OA or OB. Why is this? Because F1C and CF2 is equal to AB. Now if I am uh, saying that these both lines are equal then I can say that uh, twice of F1C is equal to AB. So what happens is that it becomes uh, CF1 or CF2 or F2D or F1D all are equal to half of AB that is half of major excess. So uh, why this definition is very uh, important to us for this because say if the length of the major axis and minor axis are given we can find the focus. Why? Because we know ki the distance between C and F1 and D and F1 is half of the major axis. So we can cut arcs on F1 and we get the points F1 as well as F2. Other than that, if we have uh, say uh, AB and we have both the focuses, then we can also construct the minor axis. Or uh, if you have the minor axis, uh, sorry, the major axis plus the focus will be able to construct the minor axis. So let's move. First of all, what is the first thing? We know the length of major axis and minor axis. So let us, for arc of the circle method, these two things are given in the question that the particular length of minor axis is x and say my major axis is y. So let's start. First we will draw the major axis and name it as AB. The next thing is we will draw the minor axis and name it CD and the intersection point of AB and CD will be named as O which is the center of the ellipse. And we also know that A, C, B and D, all these points will be lying on the ellipse. Now what we need to do is we just need to uh, mark a few points around which the ellipse is going to pass. For, for that, first of all, we'll mark what? We'll mark the focus. How we are going to mark the focus? Now we'll put into definition. What was the definition saying? That the length of the focus, uh, sorry, the focus is uh, the length between the uh, the distance between the focus and point C or point D is equal to half of the major axis. So I'll take my radius equal to half of AB that is my major axis. Put my center at C and cut arcs at, at here and here because I have focus on both sides of CD like this and like this. Now again for, to make sure that I am getting an accurate uh, focus, I'll do the same procedure. I'll take radius as half of AB, put my center as D and cut arc on these arcs and line AB like this and name it as F1. This is my first focus and this is my second focus. Now the next thing that I will do is, now I will divide F1 and O into a uh, few parts that are equal parts. So from F1, I'll take uh, measurement that is I'll take radius of 3 to 5 mm and I will cut arcs on F1 and O say 1, 2, 3, 4 till 1, 2, 3, 4 that is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Take equal distance from F1 and cut these arcs and mark these points. Now what are we going to do next? Now with length equal to A to 1 that is A to 1 I am taking the radius. I am going to put my uh, point at my center point at F1, going to cut an arc above and going to cut an arc below. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance between 1 and B and with F2 as center, I'm going to cut arcs on the arcs which I've come from F E. See something like these, I've already taken radius as uh, A to 1 and then uh, put my center as F and cut this arc and I've cut 
this arc then i have taken one to b kept center as f2 and cut arcs here and cut arcs here and mark these intersection points as p1 and p2 so these are another two points that i obtained on the circle now i repeat the same thing for two how i'm going to do that i'm take, going to take the radius as a2 put my center as f cut arc here cut arc here then 2 to b will be my radius f2 will be the cut arcs on the arcs and name them p2 and p dash 2 now i'm going to do the same thing for 3 again a to 3 will be my radius center will be f1 cut arcs above and under then 3 to b will be my radius and f2 will be my center cut arcs above and under on the same arc like this so i will get my p3 and p dash 3 then i'll do the same thing for 4 again so I have this P4 and P-4. Now what I'm going to do, I'll repeat the same methods that I have done on the left hand side of D. And uh, I'll repeat it on uh, right hand side of uh, CD, that is the minor axis. And uh, I'll do something of this sort and repeat the same procedure. So get P5, P-5, P6, P-6, P7, P-7 and uh, P8 and P-8. Now I have a lot of points on my ellipse. So now what I'm going to do is in clockwise or anti-clockwise, I'm going to in order starting from C, I'm going to start from C, then I'm going to go to P8, P7, P6, P5, then B, then I'll go to P5, uh, P-5, P-6, P-7, P-8, then I'll go to D, then I'll go to P-4, P-3, P-2, P-1, then A, then 1, 2, 3, 4, and then come back to C. When I have connected all these points in this particular order, then I'll get my ellipse C. This is the ellipse that I have got in purple. This is the required ellipse by arc of the circle method. I hope you understood. Otherwise, you go on seeing the video once or twice. Ask a professor to confirm and practice it a lot. It's very easy and you'll be able to get it. The next thing that we are going to discuss is concentric circle method. The construction of ellipse by concentric circle method. Now, again, we are going to know the length of the major and minor axis. What we are going to do is, we are going to construct two concentric circles. One of the diameter of major axis, one of the diameter of minor axis and uh, the center of the circle both the circles would be point o that is the intersection point of major and minor axis so we will uh, we will suppose that we have the length of major and minor axis and we will use them to draw uh, the ellipse by this method so first draw the major axis a b and minor axis c d as we did in the previous problem a b and then we are going to draw c d and mark the intersection point as o so we have it then what is my next step with center is equal to O and radius is equal to half of AB that is OA or OB. I am going to draw a circle. Then what I am going to do, I am taking the radius as half of CD and putting my center as O and I will draw the circle passing through the minor axis. What I am taking, first circle passing through both the points of the major axis and then the minor axis. So I have of uh, the circle let's see first i am doing it for the major axis this is the circle that i have drawn then this is the, the uh, minor axis circle radius was equal to oa or ob for the major axis and then with center o i drew this circle with for minor axis oc or ob will be my radius and i have drawn this circle with o as center now we are going to divide the circle into 12 by i told you in locus also that 12 parts division of a circle should be right on your fingertips. When I say 12 parts or when your professor says or when the question says something that is related to division of 12 parts, you'll, you should be able to do it in minutes. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to divide the circle into, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll have to take it up once again. Uh, I beg your pardon for this. The, I just hit escape instead of uh, hitting the next button. So. I'll have to go to the slide once again and then start it. Okay, so we were here. We drew both the circles. Yeah, and then we are going to divide the circle into 12, 12 parts like this. First the major circle. And then we are going to thereafter we are going to divide the minor circle also. Minor circle now.
okay now we proceed to the next thing that is i'll just join the line so that i know that i have the pies with me okay now what i'm going to do is first i'm going to take the points of the outer circle and i'm going to draw vertical lines through them vertical lines which will be exactly perpendicular to the major axis now from the points which are above the major axis i will draw lines which are vertically downwards and from the line which are uh, from the points which are below the major axis i'm going to draw uh, lines vertically upwards something of this sort 2 3 4 5 and 6 are above ab so i'm going to draw a vertically downwards line like this now uh, this 8 9 10 11 and 12 are below ab so i'm going to draw a vertically upwards line okay now we are going to take what now we are going to take the center circle that is a, a smaller circle of the minor axis now what we are going to do see the points which are there on the left hand side of the minor axis that is cd we, for that we are going to draw horizontal lines from right to left and which are there on rhs will draw from left to right see don't get uh, confused this is 2 and 3 and this is 11 and, 11 and 12 these are on the left hand side of the circle so we have to draw lines from right to left right to left right to left and right to left and for these which are uh, there on the right hand side of the circle we'll draw left to right left to right left to right left to right see and each line will intersect these vertical points and we will mark these vertical points very neatly the end thing is that these points are the points which are there on the ellipse and now we see that c d a and b are also there on the ellipse so we need not uh, draw anything extra for that now what i'm going to do i'm again going to uh, start from c and then join these red lines i'm this this in this fan uh, in this cl clockwise manner and i'm going to get my ellipse the required ellipse is here by concentric circle method two more methods we are going to discuss don't worry i'm not going to take any break